Hello everyone, welcome to my Let's Play for the Charnel House Trilogy. This is a, as you can see, a fairly low res resolution game. Uh, it's a point-click uh, horror genre adventure game made by the Owl Cave, and it was actually made using uh, Adventure Game Studio, I believe is what it's called. And it's basically, if in terms that I understand better, it's like um, RPG Maker, but for adventure games. So, <clears throat> as you can see, we have all three games here. And they're all fairly short. Uh, they have a fairly lar large amount of voice acting in them. So I'm not going to be talking over the voice acting. I'm going to let all of that play out. And I'm going to, you know, just discuss the game, crack some jokes, do, you know, my usual stuff. The game's not very long. It's just a couple of hours. So let's get into it. So it's another good evening to you, my fellow cheated hearts of New York City. Good news. The blizzard's finally stopped. But the weatherman says there's a rainstorm coming. Just what we need, some good old-fashioned New York rain. So close your windows, lock your doors, wrap up warm and settle in for another evening with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively here on BC 304 FM. I'll be taking you all through the night and right up to the graveyard shift, because who ever heard of employment laws, huh? So, to kick things off with a personal favorite of mine, Here's Forever by Nervous, Nervous Test, Test Pilot. Pilot. It stopped snowing days ago. I ran out of excuses not to go and see him. I don't want to think about this. All right, and we get our tutorial. Left click is to interact with things. Right click is to, is to examine things. Very often, this is the same thing uh, for an object, but um, we'll get into that later. Also, I forgot to mention, but um, this, is, this game is called the Charnel House uh, trilogy, and a Charnel House is a place where you keep uh, dead bodies, so you just know that good and fun things are going to happen soon. Gavin's old coat. It's been here since. Since, well, the night he left, I guess. My birthday. Classy guy. I do wish he'd come and pick the damn thing up, though. Oh, Gavin. I don't really want to wear a coat indoors. My adorable little pot plant. Gavin used to call him Dave. I called him Gilbert. Gilbert it is. You should get used to that, in, especially inside this apartment. Um... You just quickly realize that her life is basically revolving around this guy that uh, she had broken up with not too long ago, and she is completely not over him. There's something in amongst the fronds. I should get it free sometime. That's right, you completely should. In fact, you should do it right now. Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. So you want to give up smoking, a self-help book, by I. Burnett. Kinda wish I hadn't found this now. I'll just put it back where it was. Yeah, apparently she was, um, her boyfriend was attempting to get her to quit smoking. Um, which she's not done, by the way. <laughs> Books, games, a couple of CDs, very me, and an asthma inhaler, for some reason. No idea who left it here. Might have been Sophia. Hope she has another. Although since she hasn't been here for over a month, I guess she does. Well, if you're there, she's died, and the way you've been ducking your friends lately, um, either one of those is possible. My DVD collection. I'm not a huge movie buff. Gavin was. Is, though. I think a few of these are his. I should probably give them back soon. Yeah, you probably should. And in case you haven't gotten the, the, the feeling for it just yet, um, she has a huge problem with doing things. Uh, she's had his coat here for, I think the way she just talks about it, like for at least a couple of weeks or maybe even months. Uh, she has a parcel here in this potted plant and she just puts it back in the potted plant. Uh, her friend left her inhaler here and she never gave it back to her. She has all these DVDs. Park the other day when she I won't give it back. having a long animated conversation with herself, apparently. Nobody else around, but she was really going at it, arguing with air almost. She was a redhead like me too, a bit older though, and you know what I realized? That's me, that is. 
when I eventually get fired from the station and end up missing talking to you guys so much that I just go full throttle talk to myself instead. So to the anonymous woman talking to herself in Washington Square Park, I salute you. You gave one insecure DJ some hope for the future. <laughs> People talking to the themselves, kitchen. that's just nuts. I'm not actually a bad cook, I just usually can't be bothered. Just like she can't be bothered right now. I'm pretty hungry, but I'll grab dinner in a bit. Got things to do first. She doesn't really, that's a lie. There's something behind the radiator, maybe I can reach it. Oh my, is it another parcel? Ah, got it. A parcel I hadn't opened yet. Let's see. A DVD of Strangers on a Train. I bought this for Gavin. Ugh. Back behind the radiator it goes. <laughs> this is more what I'm talking about. Like, why? She found out there's a package behind the radiator and she doesn't want to see it, so she just puts it back behind the radiator. It's completely ridiculous. My mom gave me this when I moved here. Gavin had to fix one of the legs a few months ago. Oh god. Never mind. It houses a bunch of old games magazines, last Tuesday's copy of the paper, and an ashtray. What a life. Yep, yep sounds quite exciting. Ah, oh, my dear sweet desktop. Aging graphics card, hard drive clogged up with all manner of shit, it's still my baby. I want to, but I think I've got something to do first. But what? What could it possibly be? It's a novelty phone. Gavin got it for me. It looks like a crow. There are messages on the answering machine. Well, let's go look at them. Don't feel like calling anyone, but I suppose I should listen to the messages. You have two new messages. First new message received today at 1.18 p.m. Congratulations. You have won tickets to the Krennic on Thames Museum's latest exhibit. Straight from the catacombs of Augur Peak, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to... Tickets to an English museum? This is New York, kids. Not interested. Message deleted. Second new message received today at 6.29 p.m. Hi, Alex. The nurse just told me you'd been in. Should have let me know. I'd have made sure I was here. It's been a while. I'm sure your dad appreciates it, love. You know he'd tell you that himself if he could. Call me on my cell when you get this. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. End of final message. I didn't call, Mom, because I knew you would be there, and I couldn't do it if you were. I don't know why. Please don't hate me. Ah, screw it. I'll call her in the morning, right? Right. God damn it. Talking to myself. My therapist says it's my desire for an audience, for company. I say it's because I constantly feel like I'm being watched. I have no idea what I would be. But, yeah, she has uh, apparently some severe avoidance issues. And um, her dad's in the hospital. And uh, the first guy mentioned something about um, the ruins of Augur Peak. Those will become critical to the plot later. Which kind of makes me wonder why she didn't want to go to the museum, because she seems very interested in Augur Peak and everything that has to do with it. Probably do an upgrade. They say PC gaming is an expensive hobby. It's not. Unless you're broke. Which I am. Oh, uh, PC gaming is actually far more expensive than console gaming. I don't, that's not even a, an argument. Nah, I'm sure it's here for a reason. Well, then read it. Just my scribblings. Can barely even read it. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. A memento. Gavin won this for me in one of those claw machines. No idea how he did it. Some kind of wizardry. He's in the black magic for winning the little uh, plastic dogs. Well, I've always been t I've grown attached to the little guy. I call him Sam. I, I apologize. While I've always been tempted to put it in the microwave, I think I'll leave it here for now. I've grown attached to the little guy. I call him Sam. Oh, little Sam. Okay, well, let's uh, use the computer. The E key sticks, and there's a cigarette burn on page up, but I can't bring myself to part with it. I don't know why, really. A mouse. I really want a gaming one. Gavin always used to go on about the joy of basic no-frills hardware. First thing tomorrow, I'm ordering a gaming mouse. 
And it has nothing to do with the fact that my boyfriend liked this mouse and I have to now get rid of it. I should turn the PC on first. Well, I was trying. You said you didn't want to. Power on. Good idea. Five minutes of boot. No, oh, I know those pains. I know those pains all too well. It's a photo of me with my friends Sophia, Isaiah, and Carly. And that asshole's there too. It was taken on my birthday a few months ago. Yeah, see, doing this to a picture is really petty, guys. You should, uh... Like, if, if you feel like doing this, just use a different picture. A photo of Gavin with his face scribbled out. Hey, a, a girl's entitled to the occasional petty, vindictive outburst, okay? I, I, sure, if you say so, lady. And, um... You'll see... Uh, us two seem to be pretty close, and then this girl over here looks not too happy. There's something going on with her. I'm not changing it. I kinda like bitter reminders. Wallowing in self-pity, that's great. Right, let's do this. Oh look, drama as my favorite reviewer gives a game a low score. Whatever, I've always loved his writing. Very personable, makes me feel like I know the guy. Oh well, no time for that now. Gotta track my package. It has to be here today. Of course, I had to change all my regular passwords. Gavin knew them. God damn it, what did I use here? I think I wrote it down somewhere when I was drunk. Oh, yeah. That's a, a good life lesson for everyone here. You should not change your passwords while you are stinking drunk. You will forget them. Ah, here it is, I think. Anyway, that little pink flash up here at the top means that we've made critical progress to the plot, and we got an item that we really need. Nah. So let's read the post note. The writer walks the shores where love inscribed its final kiss. Time to read, Alex. Alright, so that is a hint that we need to go to the bookshelf over here. Come on, bookshelf. Come on. And try and find the, the item. Uh, the book. Let's do this then. The book that we were referencing. It's really difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and take this. Nah, in here. let's not get sidetracked with minor things like asthma. Oh my god, she's. You need this inhaler later. Anyway, let's look at the books that we have to select. The Mirror by Graham Masterson. I remember this being pretty terrifying when I was a teenager. I wonder if it'd hold up. Sanctum by Madeline Rue. This just came out. I have an especially strong connection to her writing. I can't wait to read it. In fact, everyone should. Yeah. <laughs> this little section of the game is just a, a good a good step for, the, I guess, the person who wrote the, the story to be able to uh, kind of give you guys a little bit of a, a, a look into their own reading preferences and books that they recommend, because all of these books are real that I know of, except for maybe this one. 50 Great Coastal Walks of the British Isles, Volume 2. I checked this out of the library years ago, then forgot to return it. Don't ask me why. I've never even been to Britain. Hopefully the librarian's forgotten. <laughs> Probably so. Uh, now this book makes it sound like it fits what the, uh, the riddle was for our password. However, no. Leaving Megalopolis by Gail Simone. I bought this because I loved her run on Secret Six, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, a beautiful novel by an author whose beliefs I totally agree with. Just kidding, Rand was a fucking troll. I only bought this thing because of Bioshock. <laughs> yeah, uh, when the first time I heard that I got a little bit worried. I thought that the, the, the writer was going to go on some rant about Ayn Randian ideals, but uh, thankfully they did not. That would have been... Uh, I, I probably would have had to stop playing the game. Death, The High Cost of Living, just one of my many Neil Gaiman books. All the onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girls in the world can't kill my love of the endless. Also, who am I kidding? I was totally an onk-wearing wannabe teenage goth girl. Yeah, Neil Gaiman is an incredible author. Um, if you haven't read anything by him, uh, my own little book, book plugs here. If you haven't read anything by, by him, uh, I was just American Gods. It's a very good book. Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. The only time I've wanted to slap and hug the main character at once. Good book. Louis Cassell's The Charnel House Burial. 
my prized first edition copy. The one memento from Gavin I'll never get rid of. Well, since uh, this the name of this book is very close to the name of the game, and it has links to do with Gavin and Love and all that crap. Oh, Cassell, you are a strange and troubled man. I wonder whatever happened to you. And apparently that author is missing. For your graduation. I hope there will always be room in your spectacular mind for me. You are my island. Love you forever and always, Gavin. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Cassell famously became a hermit while writing this book. The island he moved to was called Augur Peak. I remember now. Augur Peak 1318. There we go. No problem. Easy to remember password, right? 1318. Also, uh, apparently the guy who wrote this book just completely vanished off the face of the earth. Hmm. I mentioned these things for no reason. I just thought it was interesting. I resent having to pay special delivery for train tickets, but I need them today. The next train isn't for two weeks. I can't wait that long. What? The site says it was delivered and signed for. I don't recognize that signature, and even I would have remembered signing for it today. It looks like it says Benwood or something? What? Well, great. Fucking perfect. I need those tickets. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe they'll still come. Maybe the website's fucked. It's too late to call them now. What else can I do but wait? My uh, personal idea would be to... Watch the power go out. Oh. Now it's storming. Yeah, this is gonna be fun, making my way to the station by midnight. I'm not being sarcastic. I just want the tickets to get here. Guess I'd better find a way to spend my evening then. I don't feel like playing a game, so maybe a DVD is in order. Might make a change. Fair enough. Um. Looking outside, it seems like the storms hit a little early, New York. Rain, thunder, lightning, the works. So batten down those hatches and get ready for a cozy musical night in with me, Kenna Martin, exclusively on BC304 FM. Yeah, okay, um... My DVD collection. I'm not a huge movie buff. Gavin, I think a few of these are his. Yeah, you probably should. Let's try and open this cabinet up. Hmm, it can't be locked. It doesn't even have a keyhole. Uh, it must be jammed. Yeah, it must I think be. I can jimmy it open with something, if I can find something that'll fit. Fair enough. Uh, see, my, my first inclination would be to find um, someone in the, the building whose name was Benwood, because, or something like that, because obviously they got my package by mistake, but whatever. I need something to pry the door open. What better than our trusty dog? You know what? I think this little guy's tail would fit in the gap. This idea is so stupid that it might just work. Um, thanks, I guess? Some games magazine. Every review score is 7 or above. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you wacky mainstream reviewers. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Ah, the sofa. So many happy memories of sitting here doing fuck all. I have nothing but love for this sofa. Wait, no, the other thing. Apathy. It's a sofa. Actually, it's a bed, too. It's everything. Everything you need and more. Anyway, let's take Santa Dog and open up this cabinet. Here goes. It fits perfectly. Aw, oh, shit. The tail's just snapped off. Well, this was one of my better ideas, wasn't it? Fuck's sake. Oh. Poor Santa Dog. Look at him. Nah. My cracked little doggy. Yeah, poor dog. Right. Let's see what we have here. Photo of me and Gavin. It's broken. I put it here out of the way. And here are the DVDs. Don't really care what I watch. I'll just stick some crappy horror on. I'm joking, of course. To all the... Huh? Shit. 
fell asleep. Huh. On eight. Phone's ringing. Jump scares. Ooh, spooky. Hello? Gavin? Oh, Rob. Hi. What's up? Oh, really? That's brilliant. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. That was Rob, my neighbor from the apartment down the hall. He has my package. The delivery man signed it and left it with him. He's bringing it over now. I'm just... Shit. I'm doing this. I have to get ready. Shit. Yes. Um, sure. That, that made perfect sense. <laughs> what now, Rob? Forgotten where I live? <laughs> oh, it's going to be something horrible. Hello? Yes? This is Alex Davenport speaking. I... Thank you. I can't breathe. I can't fucking breathe. It's all the ghosts are doing. But thankfully for us, we have anti-ghost powers. Inhaler beats ghost every time. Hey, Alex. Jesus, how bad is this storm? Oh, hey, are you all right? I'm fine. Thanks. Fine. I just had a bit of bad news. I'll, I'll be fine. Sorry, Rob. Ah, oh, God. Gavin again? No. Nah. Nothing to do with him this time. <laughs> Sorry. It'll be alright. I I just need to sort some stuff out. Bad times. You know how it is. Hey, look, thanks for bringing this over. You sure? No. Yeah. Seriously, I'll be fine. Thanks, Robert. You only call me Robert when you're not okay, Al. I know you like your own company, but seriously, you know where I am if you need me. Yeah, I do. And honestly, honestly, tomorrow you're going to have me sniveling on your doorstep begging you to listen, but right now I just need, I just need... No, it's okay, Al. Take all the time you want. Wait, I won't be here tomorrow. Sorry, Rob, I'll call you... Please don't worry about me. I don't want to think about anything right now. The days are endless. I need to get ready to leave. There's always tomorrow. I'll call Mom tomorrow, too. Outside, the city begins to withdraw. A siren sounds in the night, blue light reflecting on brickwork as tireless paramedics rush to the scene of another trauma. On the pavement below, a woman hurries home, casting furtive glances over her shoulder as she pulls her coat tight around herself, the rain beating patterns on the fabric. A car drives past, music disturbing the peace. The woman looks at the man in the car. He turns the music down, calls something out as he passes. I see the woman start to walk faster. She flinches at the thunder. The car drives off. Another set of sirens now. Somewhere in the distance, the city is drowning. This is where we live. This is our world. Ebb and flow, endless, forever. It's the perfect time for loneliness. The perfect time to indulge the selfish, petulant monologues of the dispossessed. But sometimes it's just like this, you know? Sometimes we can't help it. Sometimes we don't want to go out and hang out with your friends. Sometimes we don't want to talk. Sometimes we just want to wallow. 
You don't know me. You never fucking knew me. Go fuck yourself, you judgmental, self-righteous prick. Cat, I'll see you soon. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a... A little bit of emo... Emo goth pretentiousness, but that's okay. That's just where she's at in her life right now. Also, that I mentioned that Jim Sterling does vo voice acting in this game. Yeah. He's good old Rob. He's a... Uh, in case you don't know who Jim Sterling is, he's a... Scary ghost who reads books from bookshelves. No, he's a YouTuber uh, who does uh, game reviews and other things. It looks like the storm didn't reach here. The snow is still falling. It's a clean, crisp night. Just past midnight. The train should be here any moment. It should. Also, our inventory has increased by leaps and bounds. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no, I want to see what we got here. Come on. We got our ticket. My train tickets. Very informative, thank you. Cards, money, mace, the usual. Oh, yeah, of course, that's what every person needs. My trusty lighter, ten years old and still going strong. Well, that's, that's a Zippo lighter for you. Those things are stand up to everything. I'd like to say smoking is my only vice, but it's not. Well, let's have a smoke. I shouldn't light up. Train will be here soon. Okay, whatever. The Charnel House Burial? I don't remember bringing this. Oh, you have such horrible memory. Nah. Anyway, let's uh take a look at this stuff. A pile of luggage, including mine. I just dumped it there because it seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah, okay, fair enough. This place is lonely and forlorn. Took an expensive cab ride to get here. We're in the middle of nowhere. The station looks like it hasn't been used in years. So, I'm very confused. Like, how far does she have to go to go from thunderstorm to snowfall? Just gone midnight. Feels like I've been here forever. Yeah, well, it's probably because you're just standing out here in the cold. An intellectual-looking guy. His jacket has elbow patches. Cool. Honestly, any good intellectual has patches on their elbows to their jacket. That's just the requirement. You have to. So, hey. You been waiting long? I, uh... I'm not sure. I lost track of the time. Tell me about it. I nearly slept through tonight. There's a clock over there, though. It hasn't moved since I got here. Oh. Great. So, uh, where are you headed? A little port town. Last stop. <laughs> Me too. I'm not staying there, though. Catching the ferry to Auger, Auger Peak, Peak Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's not a common destination, is it? What brings you to the island, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> it's dumb. You'll laugh. Hmm. I'm headed there to dig around in the dirt and check out broken pots. Trust me, I won't laugh. Okay, fine. It's a bit of a personal pilgrimage. Ah, I won't pry any further. But... You know the funny thing? What's that? It feels that way to me, too. Train should be here soon. I think I can see it. It's going to be a long, boring journey. Fool that I am, I forgot to bring any recreational reading material. All I have to pour over are some historical texts. Thrilling. Hmm. Well, thankfully for him, we happen to have accidentally brought a very interesting book over, which will in no way inform the rest of the story. I guess... I guess I should let go of it. I won't need it after tomorrow. Just one final reminder of Gavin I can do without. Hey. Hey. You can take this. I've already read it. 
pulp horror fiction. Yeah, sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> it's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> Mine too. This one's great. You ever heard of Cassell? I can't say I have. Oh, well, he... Looks like this is us. Is anyone else concerned that she is out here in a short sleeve t-shirt in the snow? And she doesn't seem all that bothered about it. Don't think it's quite the proper appropriate attire. Two passengers. Well, this is my lucky day. It's freezing out here. You guys got on board old Gloria now. She's nice and warm. I'll come on and show you to your cabins momentarily. I'll just grab your luggage. Off you go now. Oh, she left her poor little doggy behind in the snow. No love or care for him at all. It's a shame. Well, well. What's this then? Who's a cute little doggy? Sam's a cute little doggy. I know just who'll like this. Settle down, you. We're nearly ready. And if you start causing a scene now, I'll have to tell young Floyd what you've been up to. And we both know what'll happen then. That's it. There's a good boy. You just be a good wee writer and wait, watch, and listen like you always do. It'll be over soon, and you'll be back home before you know it. I can sort of get the feeling this train's not in the up and up. Aye, I reckon so. Yep. You're right, Mr. Raven. Now you break your neck. I guess it's going to be for the pies later? I'm gonna bake blackbirds into a pie, I guess? I don't know. And the train just disappears. I don't know, guys. I think there's something, something suspicious going on. I'm just not quite sure what. Anyway, that was chapter one of the Eternal House Trilogy. It's by far the shortest of them all, but it's a good little setup. We were on a train of very creepy stuff. Bags of people getting boarded, put on board, the train conductor kills birds and puts them in his jacket. Very bizarre stuff, but anyway, that's it for the first part. I will see you all next part in Sepul Sepulch or Sepulcher, alright? So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> anyway, goodbye.